everyone. Welcome back. Nate and I are back, everyone. It's Cardboard from Mars, and we're doing another strategy video. Today we're going to be talking about the corporations that just came out in the newly digitally released Preludes expansion. What do you think, Nate? Are you excited about this? Oh, man, I'm super pumped. Like, uh, new corporations, Nima. Come on, smile. Okay. New content. Go. New content in our game that we play for a million hours. I know, man. I'm, I'm actually super excited about these new corporations. I've been playing with them quite a bit and uh, having a lot of fun with them. It's, it's amazing how even just a small amount of new material just seems to make it uh, so much more fresh. So uh, it's, it has me wanting more. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a, it's a long time coming. It, it really kind of renews our interest in the game and the channel. So, I, you know, I don't know about you, but, it, you know, I feel like making re-energized with making content. Yeah, me too. And, and I, you know, I also love doing the corporation videos because they're just sort of fun. You know, they're kind of like theoretical uh, theory, theory crafting discussions. And so mm -hmm. um, these ones are fun. So, um for those of you who have watched our prior videos, these will be familiar. We're going to use kind of the same format that we did to use to review the other corporations. And we've got we've got five corporations to talk about, Nima. So start us off, man. Number one, Point Luna. All right, here we go. So uh, with Point Luna, you start with a, an Earth tag and a space tag, and then 38 money and a titanium production. Whenever you play an Earth tag, including the, the corporation, you draw a card. So you, you start the game drawing a card, which is kind of nice. So yeah, what's your initial thoughts about Point Luna, Nate? Okay, Point Luna. Uh, I love it. Uh, this is one of my favorite <laughs> ones. Um, this, you know, I don't know how good it is <laughs> in, in, in competitive play, um, but it, it's really fun. Um, number one, just on its base, 38 starting credits and a titanium production is pretty good. I mean, that's pretty good. Um, it's not amazing. There's certainly, if you compare it to, you know, other corporations that have more starting cash, like credit core and things like that. Um, those, you know, obviously that, that extra bit of cash up front makes a difference, but the ability um, to draw an extra card when you play an earth tag is, is deceptively good. Um, mm -hmm. You know, part of it is like, when you think about cards like AI Central, for example, which have the ability to just completely warp a game, um, you know, AI Central, let's say you play this on turn four or five, you know, maybe you end up drawing 20 cards with it or something like that. So when you're talking about Point Luna, you know, if you play six or seven uh, Earth Tags throughout the course of a game, um, you know, you're, you're getting a third or maybe a half the functionality of AI, like it's pretty good. You know, like the, it, you, you can get more earth tags than you think. And once you start drawing cards with it, in my experience, they snowball a little bit. You know, you start to, because you're playing more earth tags, you draw more cards, you get the cards that let you filter and draw more cards, you draw more earth tags. Like there's, there's just sort of like a critical mass effect with this corporation. It feels combo-y. Yeah. Um... Like, I'll push back a little bit on that. Like, Earth Tags, you know, in, in base game are... Some of the best cards are Earth Tags, but there's not very many of them, right? The, the expansions certainly fill that in a bit as far as adding more Earth Tags. I, I would say, like, the effect is good, but not great. Like, it's... I, I, I wouldn't compare it to anything like AI Central. Like, I don't even think it's half as good as that. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, it's just that... Um... I mean, I'm not disagreeing with you, Nima. AI is like one of the best cards in the game, and, and Point Luna is, is a combo -y type of thing. But I think that when we talked about Teractor, I think, you know, and please refer to our other discussion, but um, I think there were about 20 Earth Tags in the base game, and most of them are pretty good, you know? I yeah. mean, um, so it's 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 pretty unusual that you'll, that you'll be in a position where you're going to play an Earth Tag for marginal value. Usually you want to play them, and then this is just a bonus. Right. You know, yeah. cards like Business Network, you know, I mean, like, these are just good cards. Um, uh, acquired Company, you know, like, they're, they're cards that you just want to play anyway, and just drawing a card on them makes makes them really good. Sure, I mean, the, the, possibly the best card in the game, Earth Catapult, you know. Um, 
Okay. Yeah. So like going, but like going, I think the main thing that makes Point Luna cool is the titanium on there because the starting money is not good, right? 38 is pretty low. And the titanium goes a long way to make up for that, of course. So now, you know, this, this obviously this corp wants to go space, right? You want to, if you're pr- playing with preludes, you want to get the titanium preludes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one thing that immediately jumps out to me as kind of the bane of Point Luna, however, and you've probably already thought this, Nate, is Asteroid Mining Consortium. Man, complete, right? completely. <laughs> and I actually think that this is, this is a huge risk with these sorts of starting corporations that have titanium production is that, you know, if you're only starting with 37 cash and, and you know, the way they're making up that deficit is through titanium production and you, and you just yeah. get, you know, asteroid mining consortium done turn one. I mean, it is, ugh. I mean, I don't even like, <laughs> I don't even want to think about that. Yeah. It would really suck for that to happen if you're playing point Luna. Um, so that's a great point, Nima. I mean, I, I actually think of I think of the titanium production on that card is in almost a liability, to be honest with you. I mean, it's um, but you you are right that it's very good with the cards that combo off of space tags. You know, like um, cards cards that bump your production, like uh, satellites, for example. I mean, you know, you just start with an Earth tag and a space tag on this on this corporation, so it it all already gives you some some leverage in for these sorts of cards and then just like Charactor, of course um really good cards uh that go along with this are things like um uh cartel uh you know is is obviously a really good one uh miranda resort i mean they're just going to combo really well um with um point luna I mean, the other thing is that in much the same way that if you're playing Mining Guild, um, you're going to really emphasize playing building tags. You know, when you're playing Point Luna, you're going to pick up essentially all of the Earth tags that you can. Uh, you're just going to you're going to pick yeah. them up and and ha- and have them for later. Um, one thing I will mention in, in my in my playthroughs with Point Luna, um, I often will end up going for Planner. Uh, because mm-hmm. you're gonna favor taking earth tags early and you can still you can develop your board and work towards planner which is amazing and it doesn't seem like that would work out that way but it really does um because i can see that how how many gens does that typically take i mean i've been getting planner on gen 4 i i mean when i've been playing it and some of it's just you know luck of the draw i mean it's just but if you open up with a couple earth tags um it, it's amazing how you can move towards planner while developing your board and have it be effective. It's it's really good. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a good point. Yeah. So, what do you think, Nima? What are you going to give Point Luna? Um, yeah. Well, so we should mention we're not we're not grading these the same way we we are with normal cards, but we we decided it'd be a cool idea to rate the corpse like we always do, um, A through F. Um, I think Point Luna is probably like a like a B. Yeah, I uh, agree. I think it's kind of a B minus. Um, yeah. But it's super fun. Yeah, like it's 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 generally pretty solid, and can be countered really hard. So like if you know if you're playing Point if you're playing someone who is playing Point Luna, you're obviously gonna want to hack all the Earth tags, right? If someone does that to you, if someone does Asteroid Mining Consortium to you, you can get pretty, pretty hamstrung as Point Luna. So it's not, it's not great. I might agree with your B minus. Yeah, um, I guess what it boils down to is you're gonna you're gonna know when you want to play it based on your opening ten. So sure. Um, cool. All right. Uh, let's see here. Next corporation, Nima. All right. This one's really cool. Robinson Industries. Uh, so this corporation, uh, basically, you don't start off with any tags. Um, you start off with 47 cash. And as an action, as a blue action, once per generation, you can spend four credits to raise any one of your lowest production one step. 
Yeah. That's it. This, this is a fun one. Like, this is a fun one that they introduced. It's, it's pretty, it's like a new mechanic, you know what I mean? Almost feels like, but, um, yeah. Okay. So Robinson industries, good starting money. Um, the, the action itself can lead to some pretty cool situations. Um, the one that comes to mind is you have some cards, one or more cards in your hand that require power. And what you can do with Robinson is bump up your power, that first generation, play the card, and then all of a sudden the next generation you do the exact same thing. So it's essentially like some free power for you at the beginning of the game. So yeah, like imagine Gen 1, you use the ability, get yourself a power, play building industries. Then, you know, and maybe you play other stuff too, but next next generation, you use the ability again, play the city like Dome Crater. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's actually really good. In, in That's its best case scenario because um, power is at a premium in the base game. A lot of the a lot of the time the starts that I have that feel like they could be the most broken are often hamstrung by a lack of access to cheap power mm. and and just this just completely solves that um, yeah and you can just you know get repeated value just playing these you know these power cards um, in that way um, obviously it goes without saying that you know if you don't have one of these you're likely to boost your titanium production on turn one um, right. You know, so you can almost think of this as, you know, 47 starting cash or 43 starting cash and a titanium boost um, right. because you're almost always going to do that in turn one. But um, I will say that it, it does create this this like little mini game where you're you're really cognizant of how many production value you have, particularly early. And you're trying to sequence the way that you build your um your economy such that you can do boost to titanium and power Th those are the ones that i find that i'm most likely to try and to try and be figuring out like little angle shooting to get to get those boosts right yeah yeah um so like what are uh, actually um he's game brought up a good point which is uh you kind of value the heat bumps a little better here, right? Because if if you get, I mean, the, the bonus heat bumps. So if you get those, then all of a sudden you don't have to use this ability on that, which is not really the way you'd want to use it. You know what I mean? So like, um, well, I don't know. I, I, I guess this ability is pretty dang good, but we, and we talked about this, there's a, there, you get to a point where it, it's no longer worth it. And I guess we can debate on when that is, but you know, you're spending four money to bump up something. And by the time, you know, you can get it around back around to something like great, like titanium, it might be pretty late. What's your thoughts on that? No, I totally agree with you, Nima. It's, you know, as with many things in this game, because it's this sort of, uh, you know, this, 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 you build on things that you've done before, or there's this sort of cumulative effect that anything you do early in the game tends to have more value than late game because it just has mm -hmm. more time to to, to produce. Um, clearly, there's a there's a an optimization point with Robinson Industries where you just no longer should be bumping stuff. Um, it, you're just not going to get value out of that. Um, and I I agree with some of the people who have commented in the sidebar here that you know this ability is not as good as you think it's going to be. That it's pretty hard. To, to feel like it's broken. Um, that being said, you can get you can get combos of cards where you just like, you know, it, it feels it does feel a little broken, uh, but it's it's hard to make it work that way. Um, yeah, I think the the power scenario we laid out is one of the best ways to use it. I, I definitely think so. And then there's another person commented in the sidebar. You have to be careful with negative money production cards. Um, and that is definitely true. I, you do not want to be playing cards that reduce your economy early because then, then it locks you into boosting that when what you really want to be doing is boosting, um, you know, like energy or, um, or titanium, because 
if you boost your mega credit production by one for four credits, it takes five generations to pay off. Like you're, you, you, that's like, yeah. the, that's the worst possible value you, you could get out of that. So that's a great point. Well, I, I mean, okay. But like that instead, well, I, I don't know if I agree. So like if that's, that's a true statement, what you just said, but what that gets you is instead of it costing 10 or 11, it costs you five. Right. Yeah, but like think about titanium. You get three times the value out of titanium. Sure. And, and an energy at standard project costs eleven. You're getting seven credits of value off of that. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's it's um, I don't know. I, you really don't want to be boosting your MC production with with Robinson Industries. I I, I don't think so. Um, but it also shows you that the fulcrum for for raising your energy production is at turn five. Right. Like after turn generation five, you don't want to be using that ability anymore for money production at all. It'll be a it, you won't make any money off it. Um, right. So I don't know. It's it's interesting. Um, you know, I think. Th this corporation's good, though. I mean, you know, 47 cash and a titanium or 43 cash and a titanium boost and the ability to to get cheap power is strong. And I think, yeah, I think that they know it's strong because there's no tags on it. Right. You know, um, that's an indication that they felt it was a strong corporation. Right. Then, so yeah, let's talk about those tags. So, because there's no tags on it, in in theory, it makes it makes some of the milestones and awards difficult, right? But the interesting thing about Robinson is. <laughs> It's it's basic. If you're playing Elysium, it's it's it's, it's a lock for um, the generalist, right? It is. The, 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 that's the, and the generalist is the milestone where you you want one of every production. So that's you know that's pretty easy for Robinson. But that's a big if, right? If you're playing any of the other boards, this this corp could be really bad for awards and milestones. Yeah, I mean, I mean. In, insofar as some corporations give you a big boost towards a milestone, this one does not, and that's true. But um, you know, it's it, it generates economy, and then you can convert that into a mile. It, it's not impossible to get a milestone. With no, of, of course not. Yeah. I'm just saying, like you know, there's there's you know, let's think about your beloved mining guild. That yeah. makes builder incredibly easy. Yes, right. I do. So, love, I do love mining guild. Thank you for mentioning yeah. that. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you going to give Robinson Industries? You do you, do you what do you think? What, where do you think this sits? Oh, let me let me think out loud. I don't know. It's like it, at at best, it's I think it's like fairly mediocre. Yeah, there's there's situations where it's really good if you need cheap power. That's the I think that's the best use of it. Um, probably going to go like C minus on, on Robinson. Oh, I think it's better than that. I, I actually think it's better than it's, I think it's generically better than point Luna. Um, I think it's probably a B. Um, wow. Well, and I, and I think that this is a common theme in our discussions, but I, I value flexibility very highly. Um, and Robinson yeah. industries is very flexible. I mean, no matter what set of cards you have, it, it's going to find a way to contribute because of this control you have over your production. Um, whereas Point Luna, which we just talked about, I think is is it has the potential to be it has a higher ceiling, but you need the right cards. I, I think Robinson is just basically a B. It does have really good starting money, so that's true. It's really flexible at the beginning. You're right about that. I. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I can go as high as a B. I, I might go like C, C plus or something like that. But you, you bring you bring up good points. It is very flexible. OK. Um, I, I have to say, I mean, the uh, they knock these corporations out of the park because they, they are they are so different from the starting corporations, the first 12. And yeah. they're, they're, they're very innovative. Like, I feel like they just did a really good job with these corporations. They're super fun and they're unique and I don't know, they're just cool. Yeah. And they're not like really unbalanced or anything. At least no, they, they seem, they seem really good to me. So, um, I'm going to click some of these off. Okay. So let's do the next one here. Um, this one's cool. 
Chungshing Mars, and I'm sure I said that incorrectly. Eh, it is pretty close, I imagine. Okay, so with this corp, you start with 44 money and 3 money production. Uh, you have an, uh, a building tag, and whenever you play a building tag, you pay 2 credits less for it. What do you think about it? Yeah, this one's very strong. I, I think this corporation's really good. Um, you know, it's this this is actually the one exception out of the group of the five in terms of, of sort of novelty. I feel like they basically um, just kind of they they just sort of tweak some of the values to make a slightly different mining guild or you know to sort of make a builder uh, corporation. Um, that was more generically good than mining guild. Um, and mm. this hits all the high notes. Like you start off with a building tag and obviously you get the ability, which synergizes with playing more building tags and you have good starting cash and you have good starting money. And it's worth noting that three money production is actually much better than a titanium production because you can use that money for anything. Um, yeah. So, uh, I think this corporation very very strong and on the baseboard um, it really does put you in a great position for a milestone builder um, so I you know this it's 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 not a super interesting corporation but it's just it's um, it, it's just sort of a value corporation it's good yeah use a game saying Chungshing is the most boring new corp <laughs> yeah it might be um, yeah that's that's all true Nate um, I think this corp is very good on base baseboard, uh, much not as good on expansion boards. Um, yeah, like pretty good starting money. That three mega credit production is great. Um, this feeds in really well with uh, even even if you don't have the base game uh, board. Um, building up building tags can help in other ways, you know. Um, forget what the name of the card is that gets you the credit production for all the building tags you have but um oh yeah um i'll find it keep going yeah but yeah i mean like there's not a lot to say about this corp yeah thank you medical lab uh it's really good with medical lab yeah i i um what i will say is that you know basically I feel like Mining Guild is a deceptively challenging, and I, we keep talking about Mining Guild just because it's my it's my favorite corporation, um, <laughs> which which many of you probably know. But um, I feel like Mining Guild is is a deceptively complicated corporation to play uh, because it really changes the card valuations a lot, and you, there's really specific sequencing things that you have to do to optimize Mining Guild. Where you know you start you start to move away from from production towards Gen four or five and you start looking towards points, um, whereas it can be very you know appealing to keep trying to boost your steel production, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas Chungshing Mars is basically like the simple version of Mining Guild. It's it doesn't have any of those complicated play patterns. Uh, it points you in the direction of building tags and says here's a bunch of money and go spend it. Um, so, Therefore, being less fun, of course. Completely, but just strong. I, this this corporation's a solid B. I think you're going to get a lot of value off of the effect, um, and you start with good money, and you have a solid building tag, a solid uh, tag. Yeah, I think B's the B's the right rating here. Yeah, it, I don't, like I, I might even go B plus. It's it's just very very flexible, very good. Um, it's not. It's just really. It's almost beyond reproach. Yeah, I agree. All right, here we go. This one's going to be more interesting, though, okay? Okay. Uh, this one is going to be more interesting. Here we go. I'm ready. Valley Trust. All right, Valley Trust. So this is... this. I have a lot to say about Valley Trust, okay? This is a cool corporation. Um, Valley Trust starts you off with an Earth Tag. It starts you off with 37 credits... And as your first action of the game, you draw three Prelude cards, and you get to pick one of them and discard the other two, and you could play that one that you chose, obviously. Um, and then the effect is you anytime you play a Science Tag, my favorite tag, 
um, <laughs> you pay two less for it. So I, I uh, let me just say this in the preamble, which is that when I have played this on on the tabletop, every time they've come out with a new expansion, I usually just raid those expansions for the new corporations and project cards, and then I get rid of the expansions. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so what I have typically done in that context is I don't play the corporations that are specific to the expansion that they came with. Came with. So I play all the generic corporations, but not the the proprietary ones. And so I actually never played Valley Trust because I just put it in that category. But I've been playing it on Steam because you don't have an option. And it's fine without Preludes. Like this ability actually seems totally fine without Preludes. So, and, and what, what Nate means by that is like, if you don't play with Preludes, no one does the playing the first two preludes at the beginning of the game, but Valley Trust still gets to play the one prelude. So, it, yeah, this one's interesting. I, I have played this one on, on pr pretty recently, actually. And just like having, you know, as you and I both know, the preludes can break the game, right? So if you're... It, if you're playing with or without preludes at the beginning, this can be very, the, the extra prelude can be very big. It might not, but, you know, yeah, if, if you happen to get into like one of the busted prelude combos, this, this allows you to do that, like have a better chance of doing that. So I think it's actually like pretty strong. Well, here's what I'll say about that. Okay, so here's an example of a prelude, okay? Allied Bank. I think this is one of the better ones. Um, you know, basically starting with four money production and three additional money, it's just a lot of money. I mean, over the course of the game, you're going to probably make, you know, 34, 35 cash off of this thing. Like, And if you start that off with, um, you know, Valley... Valley Trust's opening money production of 37 or whatever, you're talking something in the order of 70 credits over the course of the game. So that's that's good. I mean, that's a that's good. Um, but it it isn't it isn't broken because Valley Trust itself isn't really a combo corporation. So like imagine, I feel like the ones that are the most busted are when you have you know the titanium draws and you're playing Jupiter tags or something like that. Um for example, um, there's nothing in Valley Trust that makes it inherently prone to combo potential. And starting you with 37 cash is not a ton. So I don't know. When I've played this game in practice, it, it hasn't been so bad. I haven't felt like the person who played Valley Trust, or if it was me, that I felt like I got an unfair advantage with those opening um, preludes. And it's worth noting that some of the preludes are just not even that good. Like, I mean, there's um, there's this one, nitrogen shipment. I mean, this this isn't this just isn't even that good. Yeah, I mean, you, you make you you're right. Like, it's it's not as if you're Phobolog drawing a third exactly uh, prelude, so you get like in, insane. But right, um, right. That's I, that's exactly I right. The, I, I think the the possibility of getting a broken prelude start is there. I, I maintain. I, I just don't think it's as high as, and you're correct, it's not as high as if you had a combo core. Well, that's what I mean. Like, look at Phobolog, since you mentioned it, because I think that's a perfect example, which is that, like, Phobolog, this, uh, this, this effect that it has of giving all your titanium plus one, there's a reason that this card doesn't start with titanium production. But, yeah. but there are preludes that start you with two titanium production, right? So, yeah. like, the, the point being is that Valley, Valley Trust, it doesn't have anything on its ability other than, you know, this research uh, tag, you know, reduction or whatever in terms of cost. Those aren't there. It's not an effect that is sort of easy to abuse in the way that some of the other ones obviously are. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, even, even take, like, Mining Guild, like my favorite one. Like there's a bunch of preludes that lets you put a tile on the board. Like that seems busted right. with mining guild. You just get to put like there's one that lets you place two oceans. Like imagine you're playing mining yeah. guild and you're just like, okay, that's broken. Valley Trust doesn't have that potential. So I think it's fine. 
That, that's fair. I, I will say there's there's one card in particular that we were talking about. It's called, um, <laughs> and and this is one to watch out for. It's called Ecology Experts. <laughs> Play a card from hand, ignoring global requirements. I mean, this this can get completely out of hand. I mean, imagine imagine for example, you you just play kelp farming on turn one. I mean, that is just obscene. Right. Or or the another example would be playing like livestock turn one. That's oh. gonna be a, that's gonna be like a ten to fifteen point card. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a that's a good point. It would it would be hard to play livestock because you have to have a plant production to reduce. True, but I mean I, your point is well taken. And there's birds and fish and stuff like that. I mean, um, as well. And so, I mean, yeah, I mean that's like a ten pointer. Right. I mean that's that's you know I mean even Robbie might be able to win if he was able to do that. <laughs> Could be possible. <laughs> yeah, but but going back to um, the corp itself, I like. Yeah, I think you're right. It's not it's not busted. Certainly, it's. I think it is solid. I, I think basically that extra prelude is there to give you flexibility, right? Um, I, th I think that's the main purpose here. So, like, if there's not a lot of starting money. So you, you look at your, your starting hand, and that prelude can really boost you in the direction you want to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and you know, one prelude actually is a lot... It, the, the broken synergy draws with the preludes are reduced by a lot by only having one prelude. So, like, the, the ones that really yeah. get out of hand are when you draw... I think because you draw four and you keep two... Right? I yep. mean, I think, so it's like, and, 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 Nima, you already have selected your corporation with Valley Trust. Right. So, so, like, that's the thing about the prelude in its normal state is that you, you're looking at two corporations and four preludes, and you're taking right. the best combination of those. Um, by reducing this to one prelude and a known corporation that doesn't have any inherent, uh, you know, or major potential for abuse... I feel like it's totally fine, and I will include Valley Trust in my in my uh, base game play now without any problem. I think it's gonna be it'll be it'll be fine. Okay, uh, yeah, that sounds good. Um, we haven't really talked about the the science tag effect. It's kind of whatever. It, it it might boost you a little bit into the science strategy. It's not like a big deal. I don't know how much you want to talk about that. Yeah, I mean, for me, I usually end up with about 10 science tags over the course of the game, so <laughs> well, it's yeah. actually decent. Uh, <laughs> but uh, for someone that isn't forcing science every time, I mean, it's 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 okay. I mean, it's just a tack on bonus that's decent. Right, it felt like, eh, this, this corp needs a bonus of some kind. Eh, just put this in there, who cares? Um, I, I, there is a corner case, and I, I don't know the answer. If people in the chat um, can chime in... Um, does research give you minus four? I think it does. I, th I think it counts each of yeah. those tags separately. I think so. Yeah. I, I, th I think that's the way it would go. Okay. Well, then this corporation is just a flat A. <laughs> All right. Well, um, yeah, I, I'm going to give this corp, like, I think it's pretty average. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a, probably a C plus. That's exactly where I'm at with it, too. I think it's a C plus. Maybe a B minus, um, but uh, it's a very fun corporation because the Earth tag is good, uh, the science effect is good, and playing with the Preludes is really fun. And I, you know, I, I hate to be like the the person that rails on Preludes all the time because I know everybody loves it. Um, I don't like the way Preludes affects the game, but I really like the Prelude cards. And so this is the sweet spot for me, is this corporation. You get to play with the Preludes. They're super, they're fun. The cards look awesome, uh, but they don't bust the game. And uh, yeah. yeah, I think Valley Trust is really cool. You should try it out. All right, what do we got next? All right, man, last corporation here, um, sadly, um, wah, wah. is Vitor. Vitor, okay. Well, Vitor starts you with 45 money, a Earth Tag, 
as your first action, you fund an award for free. And then its effect, uh, whenever you play a card with non-negative victory points on the card itself, you gain three credits. This is going to be probably the most interesting discussion, I think. Uh, why don't you start it off, Nate? Okay. So um, let me just say, first of all, I, I actually have not had a lot of opportunity to play with this card. So um, if people uh, if people have some comments in the chat, please feel free to chime in. Um, I have heard from some very good players that this is that this is a very strong corporation. So um, just to put that out there. The first thing that jumps out is that when I first read the ability or, you know, fund an award for free, I was like, well, that sucks. I mean, of course you don't know what awards are going to be good. That's sort of a late game thing. However, um, I think when somebody in the comments mentioned this, it's it's what you would call in economics principles a sunk cost. Like it, it gets funded and then say you don't win that one. It's fine. You didn't you didn't pay for that. It's it's just out there. It just funds the award. So it does give you some discretion in what you think might be good. Um, so you get to fund that first award, which could be helpful, but it doesn't. It shouldn't count against the card. Like if you just took that off the card, it would still be good. And so that part is sort of irrelevant. So I, I think there's like a mental block that people have when they see something that may not be amazing, that it affects their, their thought process about the whole card. Yeah, sure. I think that's a generally good point. Like the way the way you want to play that, right, is you have your hand, your your starting hand, and maybe it can tip you in a certain direction. So if you got a bunch of science cards in your hand, maybe you you uh, fund scientist, or if you've got a lot of cards that are going to put tiles on the 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 board, maybe you fund landlord. So it's just kind of like you you're right you might get lucky and fun and win the award and you might not but either way it's like you didn't pay for it anyway so some of the comments in the sidebar are interesting things i had not considered but essentially using the funding the award like funding thermalist or something so that um so that it it incentivizes people to play a slower game towards the end of the um Sort as you're getting near the end of the game, if you have a bunch of heat, you're not going to dump it into terraforming if thermalist is the award, for example. So that's that's interesting. Um, I don't know how useful that really is in practice because yeah. it's hard to know if you want a long game on turn one. Exactly. Um, yeah, that's that's really hard to know. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the real impact of this card. Uh, first of all, you start off with 45 cash. That's that's quite solid. Um, it's not in the upper tiers like Interplanetary Cinematics or Credit Core uh, or Teractor, but it's still quite good. Um, and this effect, I think, is deceptively good. Um, basically, it states that anytime you play a card, if it's a non-negative VP icon, uh, including this card, um, you gain 3 ME. So effectively, you start with 48 cash, I guess I should say. Yeah. But essentially what this boils down to is anytime you play a card that scores points on it, you get three cash back. Yeah, so the reason the reason that's that sort of deceptively good is like, well, you know, I, uh, well, I, I should say the, the reason you might not think it's good is like, well, victory point cards are typically like late game and it doesn't seem like it's going to benefit me that much if I play it late. But, you know, Nate and I kind of did a little tour of the the really strong cards in the game before we started the stream. And some of the best cards in the game, most of the best cards in the game have victory points on them. And so you, they're generally cards you just want to play. And then... On top of that, you get three money back. That's really good. So yeah, Nate, you know, Earth Catapult is the most obvious choice, right? It's the top three cards in the entire game. So now it's tw it's twenty instead of twenty three, and that's you know maybe that doesn't sound earth shattering, but this adds up a lot. Um, the yeah, uh, ecosystems is another one. So the more of these you play and you want to play them because they're really good. Uh, this ability gets out of hand. Yeah, and I think that this this 
this corporation, when I'm imagining the way that this would play out is that you start off the way you would with almost any, with any game where you, you start doing uh, economy uh, boosting and stuff like that early. And what you're doing with Vitor is you're trying to stockpile card discounts. Uh, like, um, you know, things like uh, Space Station, you know, um, obviously if you can get Anti-Grav going, you know, or Earth Catapult, like these cards that give you uh, discounts to whole card types. And then basically at the end of the game in the last three generations, when you've built up all of your um card discounts you just unload every single point card that you've been holding for you know that are sort of marginal value and you just go off and score like 40 points like i i'm imagining that's how this would play out i i don't know if people in the comments have a lot of experience with this um if i'm wrong with that but i just feel like this card you're gonna be in a game where you think you're you're winning, and then the Vitor player just scores thirty points in the last two generations, and you're like, "Wait, how did they have all the money <laughs> to do that?" Interesting, yeah, y yeah, right. So like the, the the effect kind of accumulates, in other words, and then you 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 reap the benefits of it, right? Because what I'm getting at with that is that like. You're gonna play this corporation the same way you would play any corporation. You're going to, you're gonna build economy early, but while you're doing that, you're just gonna buy all these point cards and stock them in your hand, and then when when your economy is in full flight, you're just gonna go off. Like that's basically what I'm imagining with this, and that three credits really adds up. Like think about how good Earth Catapult is. Yeah, and Earth Catapult's one of the strongest cards in the game, and. Uh, you know, basically, you, this is even better than that. So, sort of. I mean, like it. You know, Earth Catapults works for everything. Um, so I, I would I would say that's probably a little better than this, even if it's not. It's one, you know, one credit less. So I I, I think it's it's I, I would say it's kind of a lesser Earth Catapult, which is still quite good, right? <laughs> right. Well, imagine imagine combining it with Earth Catapult, and you're getting oh my God, you know, yeah. five credits off of all these cards with points on them. I mean, it's also worth noting, and I think I've mentioned this before when we talked about Earth Catapult, but the the best way to play Earth Catapult is to take cards that are kind of cheap on their own. Like, imagine the impact if you play... Uh, if you take Asteroid Mining Consortium, this card is already good, but it only costs 13 credits. So if you play this for 11, or in the case of Vitor's case, 10, or if you have both, 8, the percentage of the discount is high compared to the cost of the card. If you compare that to, you know, Asteroid Mining, you know, the difference in Asteroid Mining between 28 and 30 is not that much. So the way to really get Vitor broken to get the max benefit is to basically play a bunch of cheap cards with points on them. The cheaper the card, the bigger the impact that this discount will have on the card's price. And the reason that's important is that they, the, the designers of the game balance the card price to account for, you know, essentially the, um, the points and stuff that's on them. So the cheaper costing cards, they're they're going to be more efficient. You know, basically you're getting a, a bigger discount for that. Yeah, that very good point, Nate. It's just like the percentage of the card you're getting a discount off of is really high with the cheaper ones. Yeah. Um, and another last thing to talk about with Vitor is the Earth tag on there. So that you know, a minor, more of a minor point, but. That can that can help you a little bit with um, you know getting Earth Office and those kinds of cars. You know you you already want to get Earth Catapult down, so it, that can that can give you a little bit of a combo into certain things. It's an interesting addition, I'd say. Yeah, I'm, there's there's some really cool car, uh, comments in the in the sidebar here. Um, one of the one of the people mentioned that there's 86 uh, cards uh, in the base game that have points on them, so that's a lot. Um, somebody else said that uh, a, a, a point in favor of Vitor is that it's easy to play and they compared it to Credicor and I, I would agree with that which is that 
you know, like credit court. I mean, how often when you're playing on the computer do you play a card with credit card and you're like, oh, I got four cash back. You know, like you, you just forget. Right. <laughs> and and then like you don't realize it over the course of the game, but you just got all this money back and you're like, oh, I'm so rich all the time. <laughs> yeah, like a little more beginner friendly right like vitor has that same uh feel to me where it's like you're just gonna want to play all these cards with points because they're good and then um and then you're just like oh wait i just got three cash back oh i just got three cash back like oh i just you know <laughs> and so I, it's like one of these ones where it's not like you need to sequence so much you're just gonna play your standard game and just have a lot more money yeah that's true Vitor, what do you think, man? What what do you what do you grade in Vitor as? I mean, I I and again, I have to confess, I have not played with Vitor a lot. This is the one corporation out of these opening five I haven't really had my hand my chance to to play with. But this seems like a solid B to me. I, I and it may be better than that. I, I'm going to rely a little bit on on you, Nima, in the chat. Um, but I, I think I think this is a good corporation. I would still rather have Credit Core, which I think of as being an A, but I think that this is quite good. Yeah, I would agree. I think this is probably at least a B. Um, I, I don't know if I'd go B plus, maybe, but like it's pretty dang good. I like you're gonna get a lot of discounts because of that effect, and like discounts on good cards. Um, the awards ability is kind of whatever, like maybe it'll work out for you. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll just give someone, see, like, I, th I think the reason that that ability rubs people the wrong way a little bit is, and I think I've seen this myself when playing the actual tabletop version is like, sometimes it'll just hand someone five points. You know what I mean? Whereas maybe it might not have in, in a normal game. Um, so I, th I think that holds it back. Uh, I, I think, B I think B is as high as I can go with it. We have several people in the comments saying that this is an A. Um, so it's, it's possible Nima that you and I are underrating it, but I agree yeah. with, uh, I agree with you that on its face, this seems like a B to me, but this is the classic type of card where you really need to play with it to, to get the feel for it because, you know, like credit core. I, I, I wouldn't have thought that Credit Core was the best corporation in the game in the original 12 until you start playing with it and you just realize like, wow, this this just this value just adds up, you know. So Vitor has that. It, I, I'm perfectly willing to uh, state that, um, you know, a month from now when I've had more opportunity to play with it, I might be willing to revise this one. Yeah, fair enough. Um, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, catch our upcoming videos maybe we'll after we've played it a little bit we might talk about it again yeah um who knows maybe one of the other strategy videos but anyway yeah i think that's it right um that's it for the uh those that's it for these new corporations and and like i said uh these are awesome so um for those of you who haven't had an opportunity uh i i went ahead and bought the uh the downloadable or the expansion content basically just so that I could play with these new corporations and it's worth every every penny so far. Yeah. Yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying the, the expansion. It's fun to have it. And I hope you guys are enjoying this vi these videos we're putting out. Um, we're still having a good time making them. So yeah, catch us on YouTube and Twitch, uh, Cardboard from Mars, at Twitter at Cardboard Mars. Um, that'll wrap it up for today. Um, for Nate, I am Nima and we'll catch you later.